My name is Michelle Rosenthal. I am surrounded today on this stage by families and survivors of October 27, 2018. About five years ago, many of us were right here in this room. This was the space where the families awaited news about their loved ones. Today marks the end of a very long chapter. I will be welcoming to this podium members of this group who wish to make a statement today. Before we begin, I would like to thank the media for sharing our voices with the public and their respect during this trial. After everyone is done speaking, we will be taking questions and those who are willing to answer it can step forward. Thank you. Rabbi Myers. Jewish tradition calls for us to begin with an appropriate blessing, which I discussed with the group before we entered. We're going to recite it first in Hebrew. I will then translate it for you. Ready? Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechiyanu Vikiyamanu Vigiyanu Lazman Hazeh. What we've just said is praised are you, O God, sovereign of the universe, who's kept us alive sustained us, and enabled us to reach this day. It's been quite an ordeal. For me personally, the spirit of Rod Serling has lived in my house for five years. I look forward to being able to go home and Rod coming out of my closet and saying, Rabbi Myers, this extended play episode of The Twilight Zone is now concluded. You can get on with your life. But what does that mean? That's what keeps me awake at night these past months, not today really, but how do you heal afterwards? Because we've been stuck in neutral for five years. It's rather propitious that today is a special day in the Jewish calendar that most of you probably don't know about. It's the 15th day of the month of Av. Av is a Hebrew month. Why is it an important date? According to the Jewish calendar, and this goes back thousands of years, it's a day of love. I don't believe in coincidences. It was meant to be today. Why today? Because today we received an immense embrace from the halls of justice around all of us to say that our government does not condone anti-Semitism in its most vile form that we've witnessed and that we were embraced by a system that has supported, nurtured us, and upheld us and made the point very clear. We have the right to practice our Judaism and no one will ever take that right away from us. So today, we're embraced by the love, not only of the judicial system, but of all the helpers around the world who've reached out to all of us within seconds of the verdict to once again uplift us and hold us together. We're grateful for that continued ongoing support. We thank you for being here to tell our story. And may we all be able to gather together as we can once again find joyous moments in our life. Thank you for being here. So, my name is Howard Feinberg, and our mom was Joyce Feinberg. Uh, I want to make, take the time to thank, well, long list of people, but uh, most importantly, the jury, the court system, our local community here, our massive support structure and staff, and the police for taking care of us. Um, and I especially want to thank the prosecution team for their steadfast focus on this capital crime as an anti-Semitic act, as a, a frontal assault on the constitutional freedom of religion and the freedom to be Jewish and practice Judaism in the United States. And for the final verdict in this case, I feel relief. And the jury sat through months of horror and delivered justice to my mom and everyone that was killed, and everyone injured, and everyone beyond. Thank you. My name is Audrey Glickman. The only thing positive about the sentencing of a criminal is that this long slog is over. 
It's been difficult being silent about the case for all these years, as we were advised, listening to pundits debating each other without all the facts. Had we not had this trial, the deeds of this criminal would have been glossed over in the annals of history. We now know almost the full story. The purpose of the death penalty is not so much punishing as cutting off the person from society, eliminating the evil, taking away the risk, the potential for infection, and the possibility of further harm to the citizens. Even if he sits alive on death row for decades, he is separated from others. Had he been sentenced to life in prison, he would have lived comfortably in a room, all needs tended, a situation he has told examiners he enjoys. He would have been afforded an increasing ability to communicate and play with others and a chance of working his way out of any high security situation, even to being transferred to a less secure penitentiary. Moreover, the earning of reduced confinement would have had no relation to rehabilitation in any way. It is not predicated on his feeling remorse or his working on erasing his evil thoughts, which continue even after five years in the Butler County Prison. We don't send criminals to deserted islands to fend for themselves. We don't lobotomize them. We don't brainwash them out of their dastardly thoughts. The law says that we use the death penalty. There are those who seek to use our judicial system as a way to effectively erase laws that they don't like by creating precedent. That is inappropriate, especially in a criminal case. The murderer knew what the law was before he planned and executed his attack. When he liked a post on Gab that said, incinerate the Jews, hashtag death penalty, he gave his tacit approval. My late friend and fellow survivor, Joe Charney, in 2018, a vital and vibrant individual, declined in health and died waiting for the trial to even start. He and I talked about this a lot. Justice is something we have to tend continually. Can we not argue that justice goes so much further than merely the disposition of the criminal? We have a lot of work to do going forward. This has been a step in the right direction. Thank you very much. My name is Lee Stein. Daniel Stein was my father. And it has been almost five years since I last saw my dad. And he has been on my mind ever since. October 27, 2018 changed my life in so many ways. And a piece of my heart will forever be gone. I am grateful for all of the wonderful memories and pictures that I have of my dad. I have shared and will continue to share photos and stories of my dad. Through the years since 1027, I have witnessed family, friends, members of the community, and even complete strangers from around the world step up to help my family and I through this extremely trying time. We cannot thank you enough for your support, care, concern over the years during the most unimaginable time in our lives. Finally, justice has been served. And even though nothing will bring my dad back, I feel like a weight has been lifted and I can breathe a sigh of relief. On behalf of my mother, Sharon, my brother, Joey, and myself, I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to Judge Colville, the jury, our fantastic trial team, the police force, the 1027 Healing Partnership, and so many others for all of their hard work and for guiding us every step of the way. Our team has been unbelievable and has made this process bearable. May my father's light shine eternally and his memory, memory along with the 10 other victims forever be a blessing. Thank you. My name is Diane Rosenthal. And I'm here to share with you that we have, are overwhelmingly grateful for the verdict shared today. But unfortunately, neither verdict would have brought the boys back. 
The Rosenthal family would like to thank the jury for their thoughtful and careful deliberations. After reviewing all the evidence and days and days of testimonies, it's been over two months of long and difficult days away from their families and normal lives, and we are happy to now give that back to them. Our greatest thank you goes to the prosecution, a team of individuals who worked tirelessly and meticulously to provide the jury with all the information in order to deliver a verdict most fitting for the defendant. The care with which you held the personal stories of our brothers' lives will forever give honor to their memories. Finally, thank you to the community, local restaurants, and businesses, and the City of Pittsburgh for working with the 1027 Healing Partnership to make this trial process easier and more comfortable to the families of the victims, survivors, and first responders. You help, your help lightened the load. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Dean Root. I'm among the witnesses and survivors. And it is my thought that this moment is a step along the healing process. It doesn't bring deep comfort, but we hope, I hope, that this brings a measure of peace, peace of mind, peace in the heart, and peace in the soul for all of the witnesses and survivors, the members of the families of the victims, all of the responders who have helped along the way from the very first moment, those who have given us support and comfort over these many years, all of the members of the jury and of the trial teams who had to go through this with us, and all of you, the members of the community who've had to face this awfulness with courage and compassion. May you find peace as well. Thank you. This is a statement from the Malinger Wedner family. We thank the jury for their hard work and determination while upholding the law. We know the evidence has not been easy to see or hear, and we will never be able to thank them enough for their poise and professionalism. Although we will never attain closure from the loss of our beloved Rose Malinger, we now feel a measure of justice has been served. This sentence is a testament to our justice system and a message to all that this type of heinous act will not be tolerated. Returning a sentence of death is not a decision that comes easy, but we must hold accountable those who wish to commit such terrible acts of anti-Semitism, hate, and violence. We thank the prosecutors and their staff for all their hard work and preparation leading up to and during the trial. We are grateful to the court for their diligence and thoroughness. We also thank the courageous witnesses and family members, the members of local law enforcement and the FBI for their testimony and bravery, and the government experts who all contributed to justice being served. Lastly, we, to those who provided support during the duration of this trial, including local businesses who donated lunches and the volunteers who delivered them, and people who sent snacks, children's letters and artwork, we truly felt the love and support of the community. Words cannot describe how much it means to us. To all the advocates, clergy, community leaders, and leaders of all three congregations, thank you for the long hours and days you have put into supporting us during this difficult time. We especially want to thank the 1027 Healing Partnership for going above and beyond in providing support 
We can never thank you enough for all that you have done for us over the last four plus years. May we always remember those who were taken too soon. Joyce Feinberg, Richard Gottfried, Jerry Rabinowitz, Cecil and David Rosenthal, Daniel Stein, Bernice and Sylvan Simon, Irving Younger, Mel Wax, and Rose Malinger. May their memories be for a blessing. Thank you. My name is Carol Black. I'm the sister of Richard Gottfried. So much of what I was planning to say to you today has already been said by the other people who spoke before me. Um, as far as this ordeal that we've been through, when a horrendous crime is committed, it deserves the most severe penalty. And the current state of the law in the United States calls for the penalty that was decided upon by the jury who worked tirelessly throughout this entire trial to, uh, they gave up their lives uh, to be diligent and do what needed to be done. There are so many people to be thanked, um, all of the people who have already been thanked, and I echo all of that. And I just want to uh, acknowledge the prosecution, the jury, the judge, the court, the volunteers, the advocates, the 1027 Healing Partnership, and the community for who have been behind us for five years. So thank you. My name is Debbie Salvin. I am Rich Gottfried's twin sister. It's been a long road, but I would like to thank the jury for giving up two months of their lives to work tirelessly to reach a verdict. I would also like to thank the prosecution team who left no stone unturned when prosecuting the killer. And I would like to thank the 1027 Healing Partnership for their love and support and their attention to detail when caring for us, making sure that all of our needs as much as possible were met. Thank you. And I'm Don Salvin, Rich Gottfried's brother-in-law. Um, the, the events of the last four and a half years are terribly tragic for all concerned. The magnitude of the pa pain and loss is incomprehensible. I hope that future events such as this can be avoided through monitoring of individuals in crisis and intervening in time to avoid future tra tragedies. Today's verdict will not bring back our loved ones or return the survivors to their former health. Thank you. I'm Rabbi Doris Dian. I'm one of the survivor witnesses of that day outside the building, hearing our dear friend Jerry Rabinowitz die within our hearing. These last four and a half years have been extremely difficult for our family, for all the families who lost loved ones, for all the families who have um, who were afraid and thinking it might have been them, because I know there are many uh, in the community who have felt that way as well. And this morning, when we heard the verdict, the thought that came to my mind was the phrase, Baruch Dayan Emet, blessed is the judge of truth, or blessed is the true judge. And I was really hearing as though it were a voice from, from a, a different plane. This is the, the, the sentence that we say at a funeral, and yet we were not at a funeral this morning, but we had to, the community, our society had to 
commit the life of, a, of another human being to death because of what that person did to others' lives. And I have found myself feeling relieved, very relieved, and sad that this was what needed to happen. And yet, there can be situations where someone forfeits the right to live in society because they didn't re respect life themselves. Throughout these five years, the, the Pittsburgh community, and in fact our communities all over the world, have been so supportive of our small group here that uh, were um, experiencing the events of that day firsthand. But we've had such support from the from the local community, from people of all faiths, not just the Jewish faith, and from all of the parts of the community that could support us. The police, as you were hearing, the police, the 1027 Healing Partnership, so many others. The jury, as you've heard, I feel the same way, have gone through hell watching and listening very di difficult uh, statements and evidence and having to uh, digest them, work with them, come to some conclusion that would make some sense in this totally nonsensical uh, event that we had to go through five years ago, and yet here we are today. So another ancient Jewish um, statement says, puts, puts the weight of the world on three things, truth, justice, and peace. And the way the saying goes is, if truth is revealed and justice is served, only then can peace finally ensue. And that's what we hope comes out of this, that, that this that this not be the end, but the beginning of, a, of a, 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 a path towards peace. Thank you. My name is Martin Gaynor. I'm a survivor of the hate-fueled murderous attack on the synagogue here on October 27th, 2018. I thank God I survived and I'm alive and I'm here to see this day. I wanna thank the prosecution team, the jurors, Judge Colville, and all of our very good neighbors, our good neighbors as we like to say, here in Pittsburgh, our good neighbors on our block, and our greater neighborhood, and our city, and our country, and the entire world that have showed us such love and support. In spite of what happened on October 27th, 2018, and even while this trial has been going on, anti-Semitism is rising including the spread and promotion of hate on social media, in public, and by celebrities and politicians. I, all of the survivors, and all of the family members of the victims of the hate-filled, cruel attack on 10-27-18 know where this leads. Tolerating, or even worse, promoting anti-Semitism leads down a dark path that descends into hate, violence, and destruction. This is not only bad for Jews, it's bad for our entire country. If we permit hate to enter our hearts, we ourselves are diminished. If we allow ourselves to succumb to fear resentment, and hate, then we are divided, not united. 
If we are seduced by false narratives and to blaming others for our troubles, then we will never address the true cause of those problems and we will never solve them. This trial is important in enforcing the law of the land. It is also important in sending a signal in the strongest possible terms that anti-Semitism and hate have no place in our hearts, no place in our communities, no place in our country, and will not be tolerated. Thank you. So to the best of everyone's ability, if you guys would like to pose general questions, we'll see if there are people that are available. Would you? Not, speci not specified to a specific family member or survivor. So. that this type of behavior is not going to be tolerated and we are going to go on and live our lives and live our lives in a positive way and try and teach young people about anti-Semitism and all forms of hate and maybe we can make a better world. I think the prosecution did a masterful job of bringing to, to light, as in this case as evidence, 11 brilliant, beautiful people, pillars of three congregations, and all of the best of Pittsburgh's community and Pittsburgh's Jewish community, and the treatment that we have received through this very lengthy but fair judicial process is a marker that, a reminder that we belong here. That this is where we are, this is where we've been, and this country is where we belong, and we remain a part of it and we always will. Yes. Sorry. So I think to the, my fellow Jews around the world, we've been irrationally reviled since Exodus 1-8. We certainly know what it is. We also kind of know how to take it, although we kind of wish we didn't. But we also know how to lead the way out of it. And it behooves us to take what we know, we were handed this law that many thousands of years ago, we know how to go forward and help lead the way toward loving everyone equally. Um, it definitely was not something that was recommended to do, um, but it was, it's hard, you know. We, too, didn't know a lot of the details that the prosecution knew, and they couldn't tell us about this. So a lot of this we learned for the first time sitting there, and it was raw, and it was real, and it's hard to do. But all of the support that we had through our advocates and our 1027 Healing Partnership, it, it really helped us get through the way, and all of the people behind me, we all stood together as a family and we were there for each other. Amy Mallinger. <laughs> yes, I would like to say that the, it's every single person that you see in this group here, we all went through the same terrible things together, and each person has their own particular viewpoint and things that they experienced. 
And the question about what it was like to sit through the trial, I found it very exhausting, but also in an odd way comforting to hear what actually happened that day because no one of us had the whole story. And it was so difficult to, to, and for the last four and a half years, there have been questions in our minds, in different people's minds, about what actually did happen. And to be able to sit there and, painful as it was, watch the evidence and be, and be engaged and sometimes horrified, mostly horrified, by what we were seeing. But, but the, the skill of the prosecuting attorneys in putting together what actually transpired. That, to me, has been a great source of relief because now it's no longer about what if or am I imagining this. No, it really did happen. Thank you. And I just want to remind everyone, when people are speaking for four and a half years, people have spoken for us. So when people are speaking, please attribute it to them. Um, sorry. So for me, um, I only knew, of course, my brother and um, the other people from New Light Congregation. And I didn't know anybody from Tree of Life. I really didn't even know that Dor Hadash existed. And I can say that after these years and months of us working together with each other and supporting each other and loving each other, we have become a family. And it's been wonderful. I'm Jody Cart, uh, Mel Wax's daughter. Um, we we have all been together um, since December of 2018, and um, I echo Carol's words. We have become family, and I don't think I could have sat in that courtroom day after day for two months without all of these people behind me without the support of the 1027 Healing Partnership, the community. Um, that's what got me through it. And um, for better or for worse, um, we're all members of a club that we never chose to be members of, but we're all bonded for the rest of our lives. Uh, I just want to take that opportunity to thank there have been members of the media that have been with us. There have been members of the media in there every day with us. And I feel for them the same as I do for everyone that I've been in court with for the last few months in that they've had, they've heard people die and they have seen all of the grotesque photos and the evidence just like we have. And I take, I take a certain amount of comfort in that although they have had to put up with that and they've had to live with that, that that is also something that can be shared for the record for people outside of that courtroom, that it's not just us. I'm mindful of the uh, mantra of the 1970s, Pittsburgh Pirates, and we are family. Um, we're members of a club that shouldn't exist. There should be no members. But when I think of it, I also think of the fact that in the United States, we average 12 mass shootings a week. The club is too immense. It shouldn't exist in the United States, and it does, and it keeps growing by leaps and bounds uh, astronomically. Um, we're raising generations of traumatized Americans, and that concerns me as a faith leader. What is America being turned into? Because these clubs exist in almost every city in the United States. And I don't know about you, but something like that keeps me up at night. But I'm grateful for the, uh, the family that you see before you uh, because we draw strength from each other when we sometimes don't have it.
Uh, I'm Alan Mallinger. Rose Mallinger was my mother. Uh, being in the courtroom today was the, I mean, I've been there, I've been, I've been there every day. And today was the hardest day. The jury said he's done hundreds of cases and he, he was getting a little emotional in thanking the jurors because, like some people have said, you know, what they had to go through, nobody should go through that. It was horrific, some of the evidence that they had to see. And being in there and, you know, we're advised and told, you know, you can't show any emotion. Try not to show any emotion. It was very difficult today. A lot of the jurors were showing emotion. You could see that. And it was just a, it was just a, you know, just felt like a huge weight lifted off of, I'm sure, their backs, and I'm sure everyone here as we move on and, you know, see justice, the justice system work, and um, just thankful for, you know, the jurors doing what they did. I'm Peg Dorochko. My husband was Richard Gottfried. And I, I would say today, um, the jury had a very, very difficult decision to make, but I had all faith in the jury. I've been praying for them all along, and I knew that they would make the right decision whichever way it went, and I was not at all disappointed. Uh, we had a fabulous courtroom with a wonderful, fair judge and um, two incredible teams, prosecution and defense, and um, I I had no experience ever in the courtroom. I hope I never have experience in the courtroom again, but it was um, a beautiful display of this great country, and I'm also very grateful to the media. They were so respectful of us, and um, just the outpouring of love from the community. Um, I'm very proud to be an American. Thank you. I'm just glad that I'm not the one that had to make the decision. Um, I'm sure it was not an easy one for the jury. But if this kind of heinous crime doesn't warrant the death penalty, I don't know what would. Okay, last question. Funny you should ask. Tomorrow, we will be delivering our victim impact statements in court.
And then after that, I, I actually left my job in part so that I could be there for the trial. And I look forward to starting a new chapter of life with this as something that we can use to move forward. We have a big job ahead of us, and those of us here, together as a unit, have a lot of strength. My, my job was rabbi's assistant at Beth Shalom. So after the shooting, I went right back into working at a synagogue. And here we are. Um, I'll, I'll take this one as well. Um, thank you, Maggie. I should know that better than anyone. Um, um, honestly, and I'm not going to say we, I'm just going to speak for myself. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is the end of a chapter. There is no closure. Um, and for me, it's I've really waited for this moment for a long time. And um, I'm not sure, to answer your question, I'm not sure what the future holds, but I look forward to opening that new chapter. So again, Howard Feinberg. Uh, I would definitely second what Michelle said. Uh, so I've been here in, in Pittsburgh for the last you know, more than two months commuting back and forth on the weekends. Uh, my boss and my coworkers in my job have been good at giving me the time to participate and be here. And I'm actually looking very much looking forward to working like a normal person again on a daily basis. The next stage is ongoing. And we'll, we have to figure it out as we go. But we have the support of each other. And each of the families has found ways to memorialize and to remember our lost loved ones. And we will continue to do that. And for those of us with Tree of Life, uh, there will be a new synagogue and new building and new things to look forward in that respect as well. I'm Stanley Mallinger, Rose Mallinger's oldest son. Uh, speaking for my family, We've always been close, and my mother has been the piece that tied us together. We were out to dinner a couple last week or so, and it came up in conversation. Whenever we get together, we, have, we start out with a normal conversation, but then the conversation devolves into what's been going on. So I had talked to Maggie and some of the other therapists. I said, what's going to happen to us afterwards? Are we going to go through a withdrawal, or how are we going to handle this? And, and I know we will because we're very close and we're, we're together, but it, it is a concern. And we're just, we're, we're strong. And like my sister said, we have to move forward. We have to move forward. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Steve Wagner. I'm Andrea's son, and Rose, is, Rose was my booby. Uh, for me, <clears throat> to answer your question, the, the whole, you know, from, from the day this happened to now, it's been surreal. I, I've told a lot of people that, that I've talked to about this. Uh, I don't think it's ever going to be surreal that this actually really happened to, to, to me and my family and, and all these families. Um, with, with time, I'm sure it'll heal, but I will never forget where I was and what I did that day. I will never forget anything that has gone on in this trial. And we would just have to live with it. I have a beautiful family, and I can't let, let this affect anything that the future holds for, for me and my family and everyone on this stage. So it, it, as I tell my daughter, tough, we got to tough it out, and uh, I think everyone will be OK. Uh, but you know, time, time will tell. Apparently, I get to bookend this press conference. This is an unprecedented act uh, upon the Jewish community of the United States. The Jewish community has been here since 1654, and this has never occurred. So in other words, this has been a book that's been written that was never written before. Each page is brand new. So when you ask the question of what happens next, uh, 
This is kind of like our Neil Armstrong moment uh, of many Neil Armstrong moments that we've had. We're about to turn to the next chapter, but surprise when you turn to the next chapter, it's still a totally white book. So we can't answer what that next page is going to be. Ask us in a year, and we can answer what does that chapter now look like because we can't answer that right now. We're still writing that book. So while we hope future generations can read, reflect, and learn upon it, in some regard, we also hope that it gets dusty. And the reason I hope it gets dusty is because no one should ever have to look in the book again to learn what we did to figure out what to do. May the memories of all 11 always be for a blessing. Amen. Um, actually, you should stay up here. Just one comment, and I, I am going to speak for everybody because I think they will be okay with this. It has been echoed so many times, but thank you to Maggie Feinstein and the entire staff at the 1020 CEOs and Healing Partnership. <laughs> for, all, for all of their love and support um, and what really got us through this, and I think I can also say this. Thank you to all of you for your respect. So. I was going to call you up to spell Shafi Yama for them. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the MCAD TV family. Please like and share MCAD TV. We love you all. Please support MCAD TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.